Yo, what's up guys? Bill here, Classic Rock and Metal Review, doing our thing once again. Monthly haul, this episode for March 2023. Show you guys all the regular stuff I got. Uh, this has been going great. I, I divided this, this episode up into the bootlegs, where I give you bootleg news and show you the bootlegs that I got for the month. Video, a whole other episode for that because I'm a big video collector, concert video collector. Also, just uh, let you know about new releases, things I might be after, things I just watch on TV, just stream. Uh, but now this episode really just focuses on just CDs and vinyl albums that I got in the last month. So it's not all inclusive, which is great because now we get to actually talk about these things. I've got to listen to everything. Uh, formerly, when everything was combined in one episode, basically just listing 30 things or so, 40 things, whatever. It's all you could do is just list them. There's no time to talk about them. So this is nice. We get to little, chat it up a little bit. And you know what that means. you got to have something. Just pull up a chair. Hit pause. I'll wait. Go grab a drink and let's just talk music. I'm going to be talking everything from vocal pop from the 60s. New Wave, Rock, Classic Rock, Modern Rock, Metal, Older Metal, Older Rock Metal. It's all here, man. Just go get your drink and pull the hell up. Again, with the Italian pink grapefruit soda and vodka. I, would, I guess at this point, it's just a winning combination. Damn good. If you guys can like and subscribe before we get started, that would be awesome. All right, man. Uh, 10 CDs, two vinyl albums this month. Mix of new and used, like always. And I have no problem buying used stuff. It like works 99.9% .9 of the time. So why the hell not save a few dollars? More music for me. All right, so 10 CDs. So three of these are actually Japanese imports, not bootlegs, just Japanese versions of these CDs. Just caught my eye on eBay. Uh, the starting pr bidding price was cheap. Uh, shipping was going to be like 12 bucks, 12.99 or something. But I figured if this guy was selling a bunch of things, I bid on, I got three of them. So the combined shipping wasn't too bad. Uh, like I said, we got some 80s metal coming up, modern rock. Uh, so, like usual, let's start with the bullshit. Uh, these are the cheaper CDs. I got four sort of like bargain bin CDs off of eBay. Uh, and you know what? Three of them, love. One, the other one, not too bad either. First up, uh, Little Feet, Waiting for Columbus. This is a double live album from 1978. I am not a Little Feet fan you know what i mean i just got their first album i think a year ago which i think might be 72 i'm just guessing you know i the only thing i know about these guys i used to hear them on the radio once in a while you know that's that's as far as i go uh dixie chicken okay that's my knowledge of little feet so this was just a you know it was 250 or something all right throw it in the cart and uh all these off the same cell are these first four cds tell you what this album is really friggin good really surprised me I think this is basically one of these deals where like the live album, this is sort of their Frampton Comes Alive kind of deal. Maybe these songs were out on studio versions prior. These are the versions that you heard on the radio. Time is a Hero. Is that what it's called? That's what I'm calling it. Time Loves a Hero. Fat Man in the Bathtub. Feets Don't Fail Me Now. Dixie Chicken, like I said. The whole album's great. I'm really surprised. Uh, so this is a you know one of these two CD uh, two vinyl albums pressed on the one CD deal, um, which you know total Gordon Lightfoot Gord's Gold presentation on the back. They did the same thing with that for this one uh, type of release where they had to admit, omit one of the songs. So now I'm kind of interested in uh, maybe trying to find like was there a double CD of this that has all the songs? At least do that. There was a uh, Super Deluxe Edition last year. I want to say maybe June 2022. 8-CD edition. Uh, so you get three complete shows on top of the 2-CD original album. Uh, that's kind of nice. 60 bucks, 59 bucks, something like that on Amazon. So I don't know. Maybe 
Maybe, you know, who knows? Maybe start out with just the full version of this. But for now, loving this, man. Surprisingly. Got to admit. All right, guys, you know I'm in the more than just metal and rock. So uh, Dionne Warwick. So many different artists out there. You want that one disc that's just going to give you everything you want by that artist. And it's like impossible to find. They're either covering the early stuff with a little of the later stuff, or you know what I'm getting at, right? This one was the same seller as the Little Feet. Dionne Warwick, the Definitive Collection. This is the one you want if you have any interest in her at all. Uh, I really like her, uh, the Burt Bacharach stuff she did in the late 60s. And uh, I thought it might have been early 70s too, but that stuff was actually mid to late 60s. Walk on by and do you know the way to San Jose? They're all on here. There's uh, one song with the Spinners, you know, which I knew she did, 74. She's more like the, it's like a duet, I guess. Other songs that I didn't know she did, what's the one? Love Power with Jeffrey Osborne, that's a good song. Uh, the only one I don't care about is the last one, that's what Friends Are For, we all know that tacky song. Don't care about that one, but I'll tell you what, uh, 17 or 18 out of these 20 songs, love. Some early stuff I never heard, some early stuff that I wanted and knew. All the mid stuff, you know, the early 70s. And in 79, she had a couple hits. They're both on here. This is the one you want. And, you know, just kind of coincidentally, it's funny how things happen in threes. I ordered this. And then, like, a few days later, Burt Bacharach passed, you know. He wrote a bunch of her songs and for other people and all, too. And then also, even though it came out a few months ago, I kind of forgot about it and started watching the Dion Warwick uh, biography on HBO. So, you know, all three things sort of colliding at once. CD number three from our eBay bargain basement hunting. Doobie Brothers Cycles. I've had this in my cart so many times shopping thriftily on eBay that uh, I'm surprised it took me this long to get it. I've never owned this officially. I used to have it taped off my cousin back in, you know, but he had it new in 89. Taping things back then, you guys all know. I don't even need to say this, but I'll say it anyway. A totally legit way to go at the time. Uh, Maxell XL2S. That's all I'm going to say. It's almost as, it's like 99% as good as having the CD. But those tapes are, of course, long gone. So finally getting cycles, and you know, I really was kind of slow on getting this, you know, in the first place. Past few years, I've been like recollecting. When COVID started, I started back up collecting big time. I mean, probably like I hadn't had been doing since, uh, since like the early 80s, mid 80s, you know. So uh, just kind of going back and backtracking and getting some stuff I never had. This being one, and uh, I was really, slow to get it because I kind of remembered it not being that great. Had like a modern production. It didn't go with their older stuff. I'm a huge Doobies fan. They're up in like my, I'd say they're in my top 15. At one point they were probably definitely top 10. Really like this album. It really holds up good. I mean, you know, I think at this point maybe we're just uh, a little more forgiving of that 80s sort of production, you know, not all the time, but in certain cases. I remember this being very 80s sounding, and it's not. It's not that bad. Touches of it here, which actually at this point sound a little refreshing. If that sounds, if that makes any sense. I don't know. But I uh, loved listening to this, man. I was really shocked how much. Last bullshit entry. You know, I've been on a clap, Clapton kick lately. Behind the Sun, I used to have this on tape. And I remember, like, basically giving it away because I didn't like it too much. Other than the hit songs, Forever Man. And she's waiting. Finally got a good listen to this album for the first time since 85. I mean, I had it when it was brand new. And, uh, you know, it's a little here and there. There's not a lot of flow to this thing, I would say. If that's the one main criticism, that's, that's it. It doesn't flow well. One song to the next can sound completely different. But overall, it's, it's good. I wouldn't say it's great or very good. Uh, I need to listen to it again for sure at some point. Phil Collins is involved in this, but I think he only plays drums on one song, maybe two. Uh, maybe just a snare or something goofy. But he was involved in production end of it. Now Clapton was actually, uh, you know, he had an album out in 83 called Money and Cigarettes. It didn't do good at all. I don't know if I know anything from it. I think maybe one song. So when he was recording Behind the Sun in 85, 
he was called into the uh, you know uh, office of the record company after they listened to his, his first like eight or nine songs and they basically told him like songs aren't going to do well now i don't know how much of that's true or not i don't know where the album was at the time but he basically agreed to bring in other songwriters to help finish out the album and you know so uh this is the final product obviously and, you know, it's got some modern, like, just like the Doobies, kind of a modern style going on, a little synth action and stuff. Uh, it's good. I want to hear it again to give it, like, a, a more thorough listen. I never judge anything after one listen because basically, I, you know, this is about as good as it gets for me after one listen. Do I want to hear it again or not? And most things I do, that one I do. If I don't, it must really be bad because I never trust my first listen. All right, Kirk. Your ass has been recommending stuff, and this was one of them. Witch Cross, I think this was back when we did the Oz Fire in the Brain uh, episode. Fit for Fight, this is a 1984 album. Danish Heavy Metal, these guys formed in 79. They did have a breakup at some point, but they, they've been, I think, back together since 2011. I don't know what they're up to, other than I went and got this on, on uh, Kirk's recommendation with the first song, Night Flight to Tokyo. Uh, the second song on the album, Face of a Clown, has actually been featured in a series on Netflix called Disjointed with uh, Kathy Bates. This album's good, man. Uh, you know, is it mind-blowing? No. Uh, but you know what's really interesting about it? Every song sort of sounds different than, than every other song. So it's not like one sort of cookie-cutter type of metal. Um, the singer sounds a little like Stephen Piercy of Rat, which, you know, I never thought I'd say. He has a really unique voice. Guy kind of sounds like him. Songs are good. All different styles of metal, but it's all sort of in the same ballpark. Maybe Tokyo Blade is a good uh, reference for you guys. So cool. I was hoping to do a whole episode on this, you know, viewer, viewer suggestions. So at least thought I'd mention that that's a good CD. Another Kirk, and I think some other dude recommended some Clutch. I'm a little behind at times with modern stuff, as you can see. Just by the name of the channel, you could probably guess. These guys are really good. Started out with uh, Robot Hive Exodus. Uh, I'm going to have to get some more of these guys. They're great. Uh, you know who I, they remind me of is like sort of like the early heaviest government mule. Who I was, I was in on the ground floor with mule. I had friends that were telling me about them before I heard of them. I went to see them a couple times in the late 90s. Saw them as a trio and all that. So remind me a lot of mule. Clutch. Excellent. I'll be getting some more of those guys. A uh, rare instance where I use CD, actually one song skips for me. So, you know, it doesn't happen too often, but it does happen, I got to admit. All right, so on to, I got three things, like I said, from Japan. Not bootlegs. Some dude was just in Japan was selling off some of his stuff. Got Scorpions in Trance. This is their 1975 album, third album. This cover, by the way, was uh, later sort of censored. You can imagine where, if you look close enough. The first, this is the first album to have the Scorpions logo on it. I only listened to this once. Dieter Dirks produced, okay? So if anyone's got any recommendations what to focus on, that'd be cool. Uh, do we got the English and... Uh, yeah, we got the English and Japanese titles on the back. I'm trying to remember if this has like uh, lyrics inside. Nice book. I think it's English lyrics with this one. Getting the three sort of confused. Good. I only listened to it, like I said, I only listened to it once. Sounds really good. You could tell they're still in between that early era and what they would become a few years later. But um, it's good. You know, I definitely need to listen to it again. Uh, another one from uh, Japan. I was really, I have to tell you, I had this album when it was brand new and it was their only album out. Missing Persons, Spring Session M, their first album, 1982, had it on cassette. Guys, I had everything on cassette because I had a Walkman that I could listen to stuff in my bed when my mom, when I was supposed to be sleeping, you know. Uh, so Walkman it was, and we also, I also had like a boom box on my, like top of my dresser. So nothing but cassettes for me in the old days. This is a, uh, you know, nice, comes with the Obi. I think we got some, uh, lyric book inside here this was great listening to this man i haven't heard this since back in the day super fun uh what a what a you know but what else was cool about it was 
I really forgot a lot more about it than I remembered. Walking in LA. That was the song I heard on the radio, and I was like, this song's cool. I have to go get this album. Of course, this album is total mix of pop, hard rock, uh, new wave, and the songs were usually one or the other, not like a combination of the three. You know, so uh, it was kind of cool that listening to an album that was like that. You know, a new wave, of course, totally happened in 82. I wasn't in the new wave per se, but I wasn't against it either. It was, you know, it was just what was on the radio at the time. You got uh, drummer Terry Bazio, who played with Zappa. He's amazing. His sister, singer, Dale Bazio, right on the front there. Uh, pretty much one of the hottest chicks I've ever seen in my life. And uh, went back and watched their Us Festival a few days ago, maybe a week ago. I think they were in 82, maybe 83, whatever. They were there on, you know, New Wave Day. She looks amazing. Uh, the first song on here, Noticeable One, is awesome. I didn't realize how great that song was. I remembered Walking in L.A., and I think Words was their other hit, more of a pop song. This was cool. Can I... Uh, are these CDs any better sounding than the American ver regular versions? I have no idea because all these CDs I have that I'm showing you, first time I, I'm ever owning them on CD. Uh, oh, I just threw the uh, Obi aside, but you know, I'm sure you got to at least want to take a peek at that. Gary Moore, Victims of the Future, another CD bought from Japan. Victims of the Future, this is a solid album. First time I played it, wasn't too sure how much I liked it. Just played it again this morning really good and i like you know it's got some keyboard in it speaking of new wave and stuff but uh used here and there and um you know some songs that have it have it a lot but they're spread out and it sounds really good of course you got some amazing guitar playing do i even have to tell you that but no wonder this album's good you got neil carter from ufo right playing some guitar and keyboards neil murray and bob daisley share the bass duties you got Ian Pace and Bobby, I'm going to say it's Bobby Chowinard, if I'm pronouncing it right, share the drum duties. You got some backing vocals or some vocals from Naughty Holder of Slade. So this is almost like really like a, you know, super group album in a way. Great stuff here. Couple vinyl things I got, guys. I'll show you. Uh, this is, uh, you know, I love the band America. Uh, they somehow, I know this came out a few years ago. Just got a hold of it. Jerry Beckley, you know, the blonde. Well, they're all singers, so. Uh, Guy in America, solo stuff that he did back before the first album was out. So this goes back to, I think, 1970. Dan Peek, the other guitarist uh, who's not with us anymore, but he had played on some of these songs, not exactly clear which ones. Nice 10-inch vinyl, uh, only seven songs, but it, you know, it was like 19 bucks. And you do get this all on CD also, so. Nice combo there for someone like me who's a big fan of America. Pretty cool. Uh, songs sound a little, there's even a Coca-Cola commercial that he did, or tried submitting the Coke. I don't think they used it, but uh, interesting, cool stuff. Uh, if you're interested in early America, this is a pretty cool one. Digging that, and then finally, last but not least, uh, you know, I have the first three Rainbow albums. And then I just got this maybe a year or two ago. I think this is from 82, straight between the eyes. But I came across this used in the record store. It was like six bucks. Cover, a little worse for wear, a little torn up on the side and whatever. But the vinyls, double vinyl, in great shape. If you have, if you have or need one uh, rainbow compilation, this is your jam right here. What I love about it, there's none of that live bullshit, no uh, edited single edits. This is the full complete songs, the full complete studio versions. And it's mixed up with the different eras, starting from Ronnie, the first album, on up to, I don't know, early 80s, I'm guessing. Like I said, I don't have their catalog, so I don't even know what years were what. But you've got All Night Long, then Man on the Silver Mountain, Lost in Hollywood, Jealous Lover, Long Live Rock and Roll. That's the first album. Stargazer, Kill the King, Light in the Black. So just Ronnie on side two. Side three, Since You've Been Gone, Green Sleeves, Catch the Rainbow, Eyes of the World. Surre I Surrender, Gates of Babylon, Can't Happen Here, Starstruck. That's side four. So like I said, all full, complete studio versions. This is a great one. It, it was out on CD at one point. 
It's so good I might even get it on CD even though I have most of this material, maybe two thirds of it all together. It's just such a great combo of rainbow songs. And like I said, the cover's a little beat up, but the uh, vinyl albums are in awesome condition. So uh, really happy about that for $6 to get a nice compilation from Rainbow. And that one, that's bullshit. All right, guys, that's it for now, man. That's our uh, monthly haul of like regular vinyl and CDs, 10 CDs, if you count that Jerry Beckley that came with the vinyl. Two vinyls. That'll do it for today. Next up, damn it, I forget what's next up. But I'll see you ASAP. Everyone have a good day. Catch us later. And thanks for everyone that's subscribed. If you haven't, maybe, uh, you know, let your fingers do the walk. All right, catch us later.